We love you. We thank you. God bless y'all. Good morning, church. Y'all doing good today? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Are you glad to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords today, church? Man, I am so excited to share God's word with you today, and I'm just so excited for all that God is doing. If you're a first-time guest here today, thank you so much for visiting us today. We would love to connect with you at our info center. I'd love to meet you after service. If you're watching online, thank you so much for watching online with us today. If y'all would, do me a huge favor and share our online stream at High Ridge Church Mineral Wells. Thank you so much for doing that. Hey, I want to let you know that we have night of worship tonight at 5 p.m. right here in this place. Kids ministry is available, birth to pre-K. We would love for you to come out and to be a part of what God is doing. If you've never been to night of worship or you're on the fence about coming tonight, I want to encourage you to make it a priority to come here. God is going to be here in this place. His presence is going to be poured out in this place, and we're so excited about what he's going to do. So come tonight. Bring somebody with you. This is about the capital C church. So if you know somebody that might attend a different church, bring them with you anyway so that we can just worship together and just praise the Lord together. I'm so excited about that. Also want to let you know that we have Serve Day coming up on March 26th. And I cannot wait for that to happen. We want to let you know that registration is now open and live. You can sign up to serve at highridgemw.com or you can sign up through the app, what's going to be going on, and we're working out some of the details still right now, but um, the plan, and I'll give you more as we get closer, is for us to do something similar to last year, but instead of uh, the southwest part of town, we'll be focused on the southeast part of town this year and helping go door to door and take unwanted items, and then instead of the community garden, we'll actually be helping at the Clark Gardens this year, and so uh, maybe we'll get to do some real gardening and all that kind of stuff, and uh, excited about that, but hey, uh, to accomplish what we're wanting to accomplish, I am praying and believing for more than 100 people to sign up and be a part of our team. Our vision here at High Ridge Church is to strengthen people for life, to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and to what? Make a difference. And so I believe that we can make a difference in our community if we mobilize together and go outside these doors to reach people and tangibly show them the love of Jesus. And so I would love for you to make it a priority to sign up right now um, so that we can know who's going to be there and so that we can start getting the ball ordered uh, on shirts and food and all that good stuff. Yeah, you'll get a, a cool shirt to wear as well. And so, hey, so excited for that. Um, but anyways, is anybody enjoying this series so far? I, I really, really enjoy getting to talk about relationships and talking about marriage and talking about dating and talking about family because, man, it's not always easy, is it? It's not always sunshine and rainbows. Like, the, like for whether we're willing to admit it or not, there's a, often times that we really, really struggle and we have things that we're dealing with in relationships. And so last week we talked about dating, what dating looks like um, as a single person and what dating your spouse looks like and what healthy relationships should look like and, and that we should put the Lord first in all of our relationships and that we should have vision for where we want to go in our relationships. And I'm so excited to talk to you today about marriage. And so, man, when I think about marriage, I think about all the ups and downs that it brings. I think about the good times. I think about our wedding day. I think about the silly little arguments that we get so upset about each other at. I think about the bickering. I think about me leaving my clothes on the ground. I think about seeing my daughters for the first time. I think about all the good times and all, the, the, all that comes with marriage. Marriage is, is not always easy, but it is an amazing thing that is blessed by God. 
I know often for a lot of us, and maybe, maybe it's just Pastor Ryan, but uh, I get myself in trouble when I think I win an argument, but I really lost. Anybody ever been there? Like you think you won, but you really, like you just lost. And so I remember um, when me and my wife were married early in our marriage, um, I would always think that I was right. Go figure, right? I would think I was right and she would prove me wrong, but I'm a guy that even when I'm proved wrong, she'll come back, like I'll come back later and say, I, I didn't say that. Like I, that's not, like I, like I didn't, like I, I want, and like, so my wife is smarter than me. I'll just say it, because she'll write things down with a timestamp and a date. You said this on this date. There's no going back from it now. So early on in our marriage, I, like a year and a half, two years in, I realized that my wife, not liking to argue and bicker like I do, instead of uh, just carrying on things, she would uh, just write it down. Hey, I, we talked about this this day. Ryan said he was right. He was actually wrong. End of journal. <laughs> And so we were laughing last night because I was asking her, I was like, hey, what are some things that, you know, that have been funny in our marriage that maybe I could talk about tomorrow? Because, you know, my wife absolutely loves when I tell our stories about our, li- our, our marriage together and our life. She just, and, and so, you know, cause, but I don't ever ask permission because if I ask permission, she'd probably tell me no. So but anyways, I was, we were going through that and I just remembered that it had dawned on me that, you know, early in our marriage that um, she would keep like, hey, those things that I was telling you about, whether I was right, and I was a year and a half or two years in when I realized this, I said, you know what, Danielle, I'm right sometimes too. And so I'm gonna start documenting all the times that I'm right. And this is a terrible idea, y'all, terrible. And so last night I started laughing hysterically because I scrolled back to 2014, 2015, and I'm looking at notes and I found all my notes that said I was right. First note goes as follow. Danielle says I could get to Waterburger by going through the antique parking lot. She was wrong. How petty is that? You wanna know what else is funny? That's the only note I had. That's all I got. So either I forgot about it or it had been so long after the fact before I was right again that I just said, hey, it's been four months since my last entry. I'm not just gonna bother with this at all anymore. It was like the only thing, we had a good laugh. But I tell you that, man, because marriage is hilarious sometimes and it's tough. But God wants you to have a strong marriage. God wants you to have a blessed marriage. God wants you to have him in your marriage. And so my hope and my prayer today is that we would have healthy marriages. Let me pray for us this morning. Lord, I pray that you would just move in a powerful way. I pray that you would speak to us today. And I pray, Lord, that you would just touch the the marriages in this room. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, before I get into the word today, maybe you're here today and you say, hey, Ryan, I'm not married yet. Or, hey, Ryan, I'm single. I promise you there's lots of things I'll be talking about today that you can apply to all relationships and that maybe you can hear something that maybe God will prepare for you for your future. But I also want to give a caveat. I will be talking about um, intimacy as it relates to marriage. And so if you have a child in here that you don't want to hear them talking about, uh, that being talked about, we have kids ministry available for kindergarten through fifth grade. I want to let you know that before we get into the word. But we're going to be in Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 through 6. It says, haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the creator made them male and female and said, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So here's what we need to know is that God designed marriage, and it's blessed by him. 
See, we see in Genesis that Adam was alone and he was lonely. And God saw that he needed a, com a companion. And so he made woman and then made covenant between them two. And so we see the first marriage that was in the Bible, it was made by, with, through a covenant by God. And then we see Jesus in the gospel affirming that marriage is a good thing and it is blessed by God. So you need to know today that God designed marriage and it's blessed by him. And I need y'all to know, maybe you haven't realized this or not, but marriage is under attack. Why is that? Because the enemy knows if he can destroy a marriage, he can destroy people's walks. And he knows that there's power in marriage because it symbolizes what God can do in relationship through people. So he wants to destroy marriages. And so that's why we have a society today that doesn't value marriage as much as it used to and why our divorce rates are sky high and higher than we've ever seen before. And it's because the enemy is at work trying to destroy marriages. The enemy knows that God is glorified in marriages. So we've got we've to saddle up as a church. We've got to fight back and we've got to learn how we can walk in relationship and how we can have healthy marriages. I don't know if you realize this or not. Marriage is hard, 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 hard work. So hard. And here's where I've noticed where a lot of us struggle. You work a job all day long. You're tired. And you're exhausted. You put all of your energy into work. Why? Because it pays the bills. And then you come home and you don't feel like working. And I want you to know today that I've been guilty of this. And you need to know today that that's your most important job. Because it's your most important ministry. That we should saddle up, not work hard, only work hard for our family, but get home. Here's what I've been doing here lately. I've been praying before I go in the house to try to help me because I know this about myself is that I want to just go in and I just want to lay on the couch and I just want to scroll TikTok on my phone. I, wanna, I just want to do different things and I just want to chill. But I've got two daughters that need me. I've got a wife that's been with my girls all day long and she needs me to support her. Because it's not easy being home with two girls all day long. And so I've been praying and asking the Lord, say, hey, Lord, can you give me strength? Can you help me? Can you give me the same energy and zeal that I had this morning when I went to work so that I can go in there, I can serve, and I can work hard for my family right now? Marriage is hard work. And we need to work even harder at it than the thing that gives us money. I don't know where you're at today. Maybe you're in a great place. Maybe you're in a bad place. Maybe you're struggling and you don't know if you're going to make it or not. I want you to know today that God wants to bring you closer together and there is hope for your relationship. That God wants to give you vision, that God wants to give you insight, that he wants to give you direction. And he wants to bring you closer together. And that's the title of my message today is Closer Together. Now, I talked about this last week, so I'm not going to harp on it today, but obviously he's got to be first in our relationship for our relationship to be successful. That if anything else is before him, we are going to struggle. And so he has to be first. We have to make it a priority to walk with him side by side together with him right next to us. So if we're going to walk closer together today, I prayed about, you know, like when you read through the Bible, man, there's just so many things that the Lord can give us instruction and help us in our marriages and in our relationships that I could talk about it for hours. But I asked the Lord, what is it that you want me to share today? And he gave me seven things that I believe will help our marriages and help our relationships. And so I'm going to go rapid fire, uh, and, but I believe they will encourage you and they will help you. And so I want to share with you Ephesians 5, 33. It says, however, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect 
her husband. The first thing that we need to, to know about marriage is that we need to love and respect each other. Did y'all know that that's easier said than done? That's way easier said than done. Have y'all ever, have y'all ever heard, um, you know, communicators and marriage experts say, hey, man's greatest need is respect. And woman's greatest need is love. Duh, it's right here in the Bible. It tells you that. And for me, in, in my own marriage, in my own relationship, especially early on, I felt and, and, and realized, man, I had such a big need for respect. And my wife had such a huge need for love. But has anybody ever taken and read the five love languages and, and taken the assessment? Okay, so mine are physical touch and words of affirmation. That's last on Danielle's test. Hers are acts of service and quality time, which are last on my test. So early on in our marriage, we had to really, really work at this because when she wasn't affirming me, Guess what? That honeydew list ain't getting done. The honeydew list ain't getting done. Is that right? No, it's absolutely wrong. And it made me lose twice. Like, like, like this is a terrible idea. Like, I wish I could just get 20, 23 year or 25 year old Ryan and just be like, hey, you're being dumb right now. Like, this isn't going to work out well for you. But because she wasn't affirming me, I didn't feel respected. And because I wasn't doing the honeydew list and spending quality time with her. She didn't feel loved. And guess what? Neither one of us felt respected, and neither one of us felt loved. While you might need one more than the other, and it might differ from every person in the room, in a relationship, you always need both. And why do we love? Because Christ first loved us. We read that in 1 John 4. And so when we walk in love, we walk as Christ did. And I don't know about you, but I want Christ in my relationships. And so we got to make love and respect a priority. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 2 through 3 says this. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. I need you to, to capture this right here in the text. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. So the second thing that I need you to hear today is that we should fight for peace. We should fight for peace. And now I don't mean peace and quiet, y'all. I know some of y'all like the peace and, and quiet, but anybody have children in the room and know that that's next to impossible, that that's really, really difficult at times. Man, I've got a daughter, uh, my four-year-old is louder than me, which is loud. And then she's got her mama's sassiness and attitude, like I feel sorry for whoever she dates in the future, she's gonna be a whole lot of, of girl to handle. But man, We've got to fight for peace. And, and here's, what I've, here's what I've learned as a, as a young father, that while kids are such a blessing, it's a lot harder to keep the peace when you have differences on how you should parent your children. So I'll be honest with you. I'm a softy. I let my girls get away with way too much. In fact, you know, I, 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 I'm responsible for laying Layla down every night. We say our prayers together. She expects that she comes and grabs me when it's time to go to bed, all that good stuff. I absolutely love it. But I have to tell her ahead of time when she's watching her TV shows, I have to give her a countdown. You've got two more minutes. Then I'm coming in to get you to lay you down because if I don't, she'll have a meltdown. Because when, if I go in there without giving her the two minutes, she says, Daddy, I need my two minutes. And then when I go in there, she's like, can I have two more minutes? And I'm like, no. Well, even last night... She was like, I told her two more minutes, we were good. And then she's like, I'm hungry. I'm hungry, Daddy. And she's like, can I have some cereal? 
Now, we didn't, she didn't not get in cereal, but guess what? She was at that kitchen table eating food. Sometimes that can, that can create tension. In, in, like when, like, because, you know, Danielle's like, no, lay her down. But, like, I did get, my wife was great last night. She, like, let her eat, like, with me, like, it, it, even though it was, like, past bed, way past bedtime, you know. It, and, but I'm, like, a rule breaker, and she's a rule follower. So, you know, we're opposites in many, many ways. But you've got to learn to keep the, the bond of peace in your relationship. And when times with kids, you've got to learn to come together even when you disagree. But here's what's interesting about the text. It says if you want peace, you've got to keep unity through the Spirit. Last time I checked, peace is a fruit of the Spirit. You've got to choose to carry it. And here's what I believe the Lord revealed to me. If only one of you in your marriage is carrying the fruit, then there'll be no peace in your marriage. If only one of you is carrying it, there'll still be tension. You've got to lock arms together in unity and both choose to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and both choose to carry peace in your relationships no matter what obstacles come before you. We have to choose to carry peace and we have to fight for it every day and it'll bring unity. James 5.16 says this, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. The third thing is this, is we should pray for each other. Man, Pastor Ryan, what a generic concept. I know that we should pray for each other. But what I found often in my own personal walk is I spend a lot of time praying for me, but not as much time praying for my spouse. And here's the thing, you pray for the things you care about. You pray for the things that you are care about. You say, hey, they aren't changing. They're not changing. I want to ask you, are you praying or are you just complaining? You've gone before them. You've said, hey, this is what needs to happen. You've gone before the pastor. You've gone before other people and said, hey, this needs to change. But I want to ask you, how much time have you spent praying and asking the Lord to change them? Or asking the Lord to reveal something to them. How much would it help your marriage if you prayed before you spoke? Woo! Help me a lot. Help me a ton. Because think about it, just think about this for a second. Let me give you a perspective. Say you notice something in your spouse that you want to address, but you know it might cause an argument. What if instead of just addressing it in the flesh, you say, you know what? I'm going to pray about this for a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month. And I'm just going to give it to the Lord. And I'm going to pray and I'm going to take it before him and to give me the perfect time to address this topic. And then the day of, I'm going to pray, Lord, help them receive this. Lord, help me not operate in the flesh. Help me operate in the spirit. And Lord, help them receive this. What if you went to them that way? And then what if you're in a conversation with someone or your spouse, I mean, and, and you're talking to them and, and, they're, and you're going back and forth and you just paused for 30 seconds before you spoke and said, Lord, what should I say next? You think that would keep some of us out of the doghouse, men? You think that would help you? If you spend more time praying and taking your spouse before the Lord, God will bless that. And guess what? It takes the pressure off of you. Because whether you realize it or not, you're not God. And your spouse is not perfect. So take it before the Lord after you've already confronted and talked about it. And allow him to start doing the work. Philippians 2.3 says this. Do nothing out of selfish Selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourself. So the fourth thing is this, support each other. What does that look like? It means to hold each other up even on your spouse's worst day. They lost their job again. 
They're struggling with anxiety again. They're struggling with depression again. What does it look like to support them? I got, the Lord gave me a picture of this. It's when your spouse is to the point where it's hard for them to even raise their hands in worship anymore, and you come and undergird them and hold them up and hold their hands when they can't hold them themselves. You should support each other. But what the Lord, the Lord showed me, like, hey, what does that look like? Because some of you will say, man, they said something mean. They don't deserve it. Do you deserve the support of the Lord? Have you ever turned your back on the Lord? Have you ever been angry at the Lord? Have you ever done something he told you not to do? Have you ever been angry, upset with the Lord? Have you ever walked away? Has he ever quitted supporting you? And if we are going to walk in a healthy marriage that symbolizes the Lord, then our support should not be conditional. It should be unconditional. Where we get in trouble is we make our support conditional. And I believe that the big root for that is, is blame and control. For a lot of us in the room, we struggle with support because we want to blame the person across for us for what's going on, and we want to control everything that's going on. And so here's what you need to know is that blame and control are responsible for destroying marriages. We need to get rid of blame and control because the Lord is in control, and we need to trust him and undergird our spouse. James 1.19 says this. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. The fifth one is this. Listen to each other. Guys, I struggle with this. I like to talk. Obviously, the guy with the mic likes to talk. You need to listen to hear, not to just respond. You need to hear. The Lord, the Lord showed me this. It's one thing to hear to respond. It's another thing to, to hear to listen. The Lord had me write this down. Maybe this will encourage you. Hear with a loving ear. Hear with a loving ear. Sometimes listening does more than talking. You ever hear someone do a whole lot of talking, but really they aren't saying much of anything? Sometimes you can do a whole lot of talking, and I'm, I'm the worst at this at times. Because when I know I'm wrong, I'll become defensive. And I'll not even let you finish your, what you're saying, and I'll like spout out something very, very quickly. And I know some of us are the same way in the room, but what would it look like if we were just quiet? And we listened and go back to what I said a while ago. Maybe we just prayed. You know, you heard this growing up, but it's absolutely true. God gave you two ears and one mouth. You should do twice as much listening as you do speaking. But for most of us, we are just ready to respond. How would your marriage, how would your relationship look like if you heard the heartbeat of what your spouse was actually saying. You removed the defensiveness. You removed insecurity. You made room for the Holy Spirit to bring peace to the situation. You prayed about it and you actually heard what they were saying. I'm, I struggle with this. The Lord really convicted me with this point right here this week. It's hard for me. But we have to learn to get out of the way. Because communication is so important to a marriage. And we have to learn to communicate. We can, all of us in the room like to talk. But we don't like to do a whole lot of listening. Same thing with your relationship with the Lord. Man, a lot of us do a whole lot of talking and then we wonder 
man, why is it so hard for me to hear the Lord? Why haven't I heard what he wants to speak to me lately? Maybe if we would just be quiet for a second, we could hear what we need to hear so that we could walk in health. Ephesians 4.26 says this, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Whew. Anybody guilty in the room? I am. The sixth thing is this, forgive each other. Man, I have so many memories in my marriage, and I know all of you do too as well in your relationships. You have these memories, but you also have the memories of when people hurt you. And here's what I've noticed with people. is so often what stinks is that we remember the few bad times instead of all the really good times. And if we hold on to all those things, those bad times, we, we begin to harbor unforgiveness, we'll allow our past to steal our future. And that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to hold on to the things that have happened in your past so that it will rob the future and the health that God wants to bring to your marriage. Man, this can be tough at times. My wife has a photographic memory. I do not at all. I'll forget something two hours later, often. And, uh, man, she'll be like, you said this on January 6, 2014. And I'll be like, no, I didn't. She's like, yeah, I did. I wrote it down. But here's the thing. We can't hold on to all these things. We have to let go of them so that we can move forward. Because the enemy wants you to hold on to unforgiveness so that he can create a wedge with you. And I'm like, I have, I think everybody in a relationships has this in the, you have one of you that it takes a while for you to cool down. And one of you probably is over the argument 10 minutes later. And if you are both people that hold on to it, sorry. But I'm one, 10 minutes later, I'm ready to be over it. And my wife needs some time to process. That was some tension in our relationship early on because I wouldn't let her process. I'd be like, just forgive me. Just forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Doesn't matter how many times I said sorry, she needed time to process. And so now I've learned I apologize, and I give time to process. But here's where I, I made the mistakes often is like, hey, just because I get over it quickly, like, hey, there's times I've messed up, and I have not apologized, and we've gone to bed uh, with, a, with an argument or whatever it is, and then I wake up in the morning, and I'm over it. I got my eight hours of sleep. That argument does no longer exist. It's done with. And she'll be like, hey, crazy, do you not remember what you said to me last night, Ryan? Do you not remember that you didn't even apologize? No. <laughs> Man, we should never go to bed angry or upset because the enemy wants to create a wedge between you. And we've got to learn to let go of these things. While it's not easy, the enemy wants you to hold on to unforgiveness because no, he knows that there's power in your future. So he wants to dangle your past over you. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 3 through 5. It says, The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Translation, we belong to each other. Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time, so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. The last one that I need you to hear today is this, and I think it's important, we don't talk about it enough, is to remain intimate often. God designed sex for man and woman and for marriage. And it is a blessed thing. It is a great thing, and God made it to be good. In Genesis, when he talks about Adam and Eve becoming one flesh, the translation literally means that they were intimate together. So God created intimacy to be a great thing. But here's what I need you to hear today, and I need you to hear it now. 
Sex is meant to be a blessing, not a bargaining tool. Here's what I mean by that. Both men and women in the room, you're guilty. Hey, babe, I took out the trash on time today. I painted those windows you've been talking about. I ordered all those gifts and those wanted items on Amazon Prime that you've had stored there for me to happen to see. I ordered all of them. I just took you to your favorite restaurant and dessert place. You know what time it is. I'm just being real with you. And then I can go on the opposite end. I put all those Amazon items out there and you didn't order one of them, Ryan. You didn't take the trash out and now you're gonna ask for intimacy? No, I have a headache. <laughs> I hope y'all, I hope y'all, I hope y'all have enjoy the real talk. But here's what you need, what you need to realize today is this, is that sex is a blessing from God and it brings unity to your relationship. And when we use it as a bargaining tool, it creates a wedge in our relationship that God doesn't want to put there. He wants you to walk in unity and he doesn't want you to withhold from each other as a bargaining tool because then that's when the enemy likes to creep in and we begin to struggle with things like pornography and lust and, and, and trying to talk to other people is because, man, there's not unity in our relationship. And I can tell you so many times, I can tell when I'm meeting the couples in the office, I, I'll turn their faces all red because I'll bring this topic up because usually it's the root of a lot of problems in the relationship. God designed it to bring unity to your relationships. I wanna close with this verse real quick. I'm out of time. Ecclesiastes chapter four, verses nine through 12. It says, two people are better off than one where they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying closer together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Translation, two is better than one, but three is better than two. What do I mean by that? It's one thing to walk in unity together, but it's one thing to walk side by side with the Lord. And the Lord wants to be in your relationships today. He wants to bless your relationships. He wants to bless your marriage today. You don't have to struggle with forgiveness. You don't have to struggle with intimacy. You don't have to struggle with listening. You can learn to keep peace by walking through the spirit. You can learn to respect and love each other. But how? By allowing the Lord to speak in your marriages. If you would bow your heads and close your eyes quickly. We have to learn to pray for each other. We have to learn to support each other. We have to learn to walk by the Spirit. So I don't know where you're at today. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe today is your last hope. Maybe your marriage is going really good, but it's lacking vision. Maybe, hey, there's some unity there, but we're really not prioritizing the Lord. Hey, we're not really supporting each other. We're not really communicating very well right now. Hey, things are going really well, but we'd like some more vision, Ryan. I don't know where you're at today, but I do know that the Lord wants to do something today and he wants to meet you right where you're at and he wants you to walk in abundance and he wants you to have a healthy marriage today. So if you wanna have a healthy marriage today and you just want the Lord to meet you right where you're at, I ask you to stand up together. You want a healthy marriage no matter where you're at. Good, bad, ugly, struggling. You just want more of the Lord in your relationship. 
Lord, I just pray right now for all the relationships and marriages in this room that you would be at the center of it. That we'd learn to walk side by side with you in our relationships so that we would learn there's power in unity. There's power when we walk together. That our relationships, our marriages are a symbol of what a relationship with Christ looks like. And I pray we would walk in the power of that, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. All heads still bowed down. Got one more prayer for you. No one looking around. Maybe you're here today and you say, hey, that's great and all. And I want a healthy marriage. I want healthy relationships. But to be honest, I don't know that my relationship with the Lord is right. I don't know that I would spend eternity in his heaven if I were to die today. And if that's you, I believe the Lord wants to meet you right where you're at today. If you want to make Jesus Lord of your life today, I want you to pray this with me. You can settle for once and for all to know that you're going to spend eternity in his heaven. You can pray this right now and he can meet you right where you're at today. So if that's you, pray this with me, friend. Jesus, come on, pray it. I give you my heart. I give you control. Forgive me of my sin. I turn to you. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for raising from the grave. Thank you for just now hearing my prayer. If that's you, I'm not gonna embarrass you. I'm not gonna call you out. All heads are bowed down. No one's looking around. I just wanna celebrate your decision today. If you just prayed with me to make Christ your savior, you just look at me, give me a quick little wave. Got you right there. Got you right there. Got you right there. Anybody else? You just pray with me. Anybody else? Got you right there. Anybody else? Give me a quick little wave. Got you right there. Anybody else? Got you back there. Anybody else? Just give me a quick little wave, quick little look. Anybody else? Praise God. Well, everybody, look at me. We had six people make decisions for Christ in this service. If you made a decision for Christ, we'd love to know about it. You can text the number on the screen or you can fill a connect card out in the seat back pocket in front of you. We'd love for you to get signed up for our next water baptisms coming up in April. Um, baptism is simply this. It's an outward expression of what Christ has done on the inside of you. And we would love for you to take that next step. Well, I hope you're encouraged today. I'm gonna hand it over to Pastor Hallie. What an encouraging message that was from the word of God this morning. Are you thankful to be here? We are so truly honored that you chose to come and spend part of your weekend worshiping Jesus with us here. We hope that when you come, you feel at home here as a part of our family. If you're new to High Ridge, or especially if you prayed with Pastor Ryan today, or maybe you're ready to to discover your purpose and step into serving on part of our one team during our weekend services. We would absolutely love for you to grab this beautiful green connect card located in the seat pocket in front of you. Grab it and fill it out. On the back of the card is our growth track and it is exactly where you might be in your discipleship process. And we would love for you to let us know where you're at and what your next step is. So, or maybe that you're ready to help other people take their next step as you are a disciple making other disciples. We would love for you to fill this out. Drop it in the information center in the lobby on your way out or drop it in the offering boxes as you exit the room today. But we would love the opportunity to connect with you and help you take those next steps with Christ wherever they are. Our vision as a church is to strengthen people for life. We want you to know God so you can find freedom in him, discover your purpose, and then go out and make a difference. And we want you to know that if you give financially to the vision of this house, if you sow your tithe here, if you give your offerings over and above the tithe because of your generosity you are making a difference this week we were able our orphan care ministry was able to provide a washer and a dryer for a people that in need right here in our community and I think that that's wonderful because God is moving beyond the walls of our house because of your faithfulness to give and be generous. So continue to do so. If you haven't taken that step, I wanna encourage you to do so. The Lord says that it is better to give than to receive. There are multiple ways that you can give here. You can text to give, you can give online, or you can give through the High Ridge app or drop your offerings in the back of the room or in the lobby in our offering boxes. But the, the word of God wants us to share so that we can continue to give beyond our walls. And that is what we're doing. So thank you for your generosity. Continue to be faithful with God and what he has given you. If you would stand to your feet, 
we would love to encourage you. Our prayer team is gonna be up here um, ready to pray with you. They're ready to receive you and they will pray over anything that you have. So get up here, get strengthened in your faith, get anchored in hope. And as you leave today, you'll notice in the lobby, there is an anchored in hope invite card um, on a stanchion out there. And we would love for you to take those out into this city and let people know that Jesus loves them, that he's with them where they are and that they're invited here because they're welcome here, okay? So take those as you go. And have you been strengthened this morning? Yes. Then go strengthen others for life and remember to stay anchored in hope. We will see you tonight at five for our night of worship.